All right, people, episode 17, Wake and Rake. We're back. I know you missed us over the past, what, five, six days, Will Middlebrooks. It's been a few days since we've been back on, but kind of missed you guys, so we figured we'd jump back on and give you Has guys. it been that long? It's been a few days, but you know what? We've been getting some big hitters, so it's, again, it's not always about the... Uh, quantity it's about we've been busy we've been busy with our with real life stuff work yeah like kids work yeah Yeah. so but we're back that's all that matters we're back baby yes a lot of stuff going on right now uh yeah baseball's hot in the streets right now hey guess what shohei otani and mike trout are both raking the angels are still in last place what a freaking surprise bro you want to hear something crazy someone asked me doing a radio show the other day and they asked me, is Shohei a real MVP candidate? And I just laughed because I, I think they were, of course, they knew the answer is rhetorical, but they were asking anyways. And the more I thought about it, my answer, he could win MVP solely based on his offensive output. He's leading not the league just, off. not just like, not even to think about the pitching side. Like he could lead the league in hall. He could hit 50 homers. He's on pace. Right, that's what I'm saying. So he could win MVP just as a hitter, even if you took pitching totally out of the equation. So let's say he goes nine and seven with a two eight on top of that. He's 100% the MVP. Well, I, that's weird. I thought you said if Mike Trout hit 400, that you would have to. Mike Trout's not going to hit 400 now. I'm I said, gonna... I said if he hits 400, oh. they're going to have a dilemma. Oh, we can take it back and pull the, pull the feed. If he hits 400, I said it'd be hard to not get the MVP to someone who hit 400. I did say exactly that. But Otani is the homer he hit uh, a couple nights ago, the one at his chin that he hit out, that was unbelievable. What was more impressive to you, that one or the, oh, one, the one he hit over the green monster with his ass out with one hand? Um, I think the lefty on lefty fastball at his clavicle. I think that that was more impressive. Um, the other one, he missed it. It was still a homer, <laughs> uh, you know, and it wasn't even that close. It wasn't like a scraper either. It went, it went out by a good amount. Yeah, he's a he's a freak. I, t- I texted with Jay up about him. I was just like, dude, are you, he's like, I said, how about that homer show I hit? And he was like, dude, I'm not even surprised anymore. The dude is a freak. I'm so, glad that we, I'm so glad we have Jay up on record on our podcast saying, He's the most talented player I've ever seen. Is Otani like just that special? Um, he's the most talented baseball player I've ever seen. Because at the time we were like, we we're like, wow, what, what, a, what about Mike? <laughs> you, yeah, what about Mike Trout? Are you kidding me? And now, like the timing of JF saying that could have couldn't have been more perfect because now he's putting it on display, and we're like, yeah, he is the most talented player in baseball. Yeah, it makes sense. It, it's it's crazy. He's he's. He's playing like a really good high school player does in high school. He- <laughs> don't, don't get me started there because there's been some people commenting, oh, that, what's the big deal? I did it in high school. A little I'm different. Even, I'm not even going to entertain that. A little different what, at the major league. What do we got on tap today, Dan? What do we have on tap? We got Shohei Otani, which we've already been bantering about. So we'll probably. We're basically give- an Otani stan account. Right yeah, now. basically. We'll give him. A- Everyone is. Uh, we'll talk about Albert Pujols signing with the Los Angeles Dodgers. And he went one for four with a ribby in his first game with LA. And Yoshi Tsutsugo also going to Los Angeles from the Tampa Bay Rays. So they got two first basemen going over to Southern California. And then we'll talk a little bit about the Minnesota Twins announcers condemning your mean Mercedes for swinging 3-0 with an 11-run lead. I don't want to spend too much time on it because I'm tired of talking about this stupid unwritten rules. We'll talk a little bit about the Manny Machado slide, and then we'll talk about the Mets. How about the Mets? Just the fact that they have scored the least amount of runs in baseball, yet they're in first place. And then and they're falling, we'll and they're this, falling apart. Oh, we'll get there. We'll get there. And then at the end, we're going to talk about five hitters that you may not have noticed are having like really productive, good seasons. Um, kind of flying under the radar. And then we're going to break down why Ronald Acuna and Vladdy G are having so much success and what pitchers need to do to get them out. Because Brooksy here, our hitting expert, has some uh, he has some pretty sweet numbers to pass by you guys that you guys might want to tune into. So we got some good stuff on tap. Of course, first and foremost, it's our Rowdy Roundup presented by Rowdy Energy. Use 
promo code wake and break for 10% off all rowdy energy products. Shohei Otani, let me ask you this because we've already talked to Otani enough and we can pass it off and we can get on to the next conversation. But before we pass it off, how long before we're including Shohei Otani, who is 26 years old, how long before we start including him with guys like Tatis, Acuna, Juan Soto? Is he like up there in the upper echelon? Because we talk about, we marvel over yes. everything he does, but it seems like he's left out of the conversation because um, volume, he hasn't accumulated the volume quite yet. I don't think he's, I think he's in the conversation already. Top, I mean, top if you, 10, top five player, right? Yeah. Um, are you asking me top 10 or top five? What are you, are you, what are you asking me? I get, it's so tough. Cause like I said, he hasn't accumulated the volume yet. I mean, listen, <laughs> he pitches tonight. He leads the league in homers and he has the same ERA as Max Scherzer. Yes. He's a top five. Who doesn't want them, want him on their team? You get an ace, and you get a guy who's going to produce offensively. So, yeah, he is. He should be in the conversation with the guys who we're talking about, the faces of the game. Let's look at jersey jersey sales at the end of this year. I guarantee his is up there. Yeah. Now it hurts. It hurts him that he's little brother in L.A. right now, uh, as far as being on the Angels. I wouldn't even say that anymore. I think Otani has more publicity and promotion coming his way than they do my well it's worldwide too it's not just because he's he's from japan so it's right it's which that's also good for being in the hub of los angeles which is massive with that market but let's play a game oh god who would you rather have for the next 10 years if you're a gm who would you rather have for the next 10 10 10 years on the spot i'm putting on the spot here shohei otani or fernando tatis jr Tatis Jr., he's younger. 10 Ronald, years. Shohei's going to be 36 in 10 years. Ronald Acuna, Shohei Otani. How old is it, Acuna? 24? 22. Oh, I thought he was older. Uh, Acuna. Look, here's the deal. In 10 years, Otani won't be throwing 100. 23, I'm sorry for Acuna. Okay. Way off. Um, Yeah, t- I mean, the difference in... 32 or 33 and 36 at the end of that. <laughs> okay. Well, I got one. Mike Trout's 29. Who would you rather have for the next 10 years? Mike Trout or Shoho Otani? Ooh, now that's a tough one. Next 10 years? Mike Trout's going to be 39 in 10 years. Shoho Otani, 36. Dang, that's tough. I told you I'm putting you on the spot here. I, I'm like running. You know the, the gift that has like all the numbers and calculations? Yep. Yeah, that's what's going on in my head right now. It's mostly just uh, long division and addition. I didn't get past that in high school. <laughs> um, you put you took carry baseball the one, one uh, Mike Trout. Fair enough. Okay, moving on. Albert Pujols signing with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Now, if you're wondering why he signed with the Los Angeles Dodgers, welcome to the team. But I think there is some explanation because one, he's actually still hitting left-handed pitchers pretty well. Number two. Corey Seager going on EIL with a broken hand. That just limits their depth to another degree because Los Angeles, it's funny. I, I hate to do the I told you so type thing, but the whole losing Kike Hernandez, Jock Peterson, I've mentioned it so many times on this podcast. I thought it was, I thought that was a huge, huge loss for the Dodgers. And I think you're seeing it to rely on minor league players to step into those shoes. That's something the Dodgers haven't had to deal with. Now you add Yossi Tutsugo from the Tampa Bay Rays, and you add Albert Pujols as well. Provides a little bit of depth, and it provides a little bit of security for a team that's hurting with Cody Bellinger out, Corey Seager's now out, and they just lost Dustin May, one of their best starting pitchers. Tony Gonsolin, IL, I mean, the injuries are racking up for Los Angeles, but maybe Albert Pujols can provide a little bit of a boost on the offense. Yeah, but he's going to have to play defense. It's the NL, and he's going to hurt you defensively. He provided a positive output last year in defense. He's not a good defender. I'm not making the case that he's going to win a gold okay. club. I'm just saying <laughs> I like, I'd can... rather have Max Muncy facing left-handers and yes. be the everyday first. first and, and they mentioned that Max Muncy can Muncy can play second, third base. Like he can kind of float anyway. Right. No, no. For for now, 
this makes sense. And I think what the bigger picture, and I'm going to give you more of a player's perspective, especially someone, a, a veteran player, he didn't want his family to have to pack up and move again. Unless, unless it was to go back to the Cardinals where they live in the off season, they live in St. Louis. So his foundations there, his, his everyday home in the off season is in St. Louis. But for now, his family can they can stay in the same place. They already have a lease on a play. Not not that he's hurting for money, but now he's not going to lose money on a lease, um, and his family just can stay put. I think that played a big role in it, and that's not something that's going to get talked about. But I think that played a, a big part of him staying in LA. I think if he goes to St. Louis, too, people immediately think, oh, it's a charity case. With Los Angeles, it's like no, they want him. Like they want his. Well, they no, they need someone. Mm-hmm. Like just just come in. Give us a few big knocks, and then my I'm curious to what is going to happen though when their guys start coming back. Mm-hmm. So do they release them? No chance. No okay. chance. When all their guys are healthy, though, you're going to continue to platoon, even if he's hitting 200. I shouldn't say no chance. If he really struggles, sure. The Dodgers are going to do whatever. The Dodgers don't owe him a thing. They're playing. They're paying him prorated league minimum, so it they won't bother them to DFA him. So, um, I I could see them cutting him loose later on this summer, and then him going to St. Louis and retiring there. Against left-handed pitchers this season, Albert Pools is still doing just fine. Um, so if you're wondering. Like, why do you sign Albert Pools? He's 39 years old. I think he's 39 now. Is he ever? He's 41. He's 41 years old. So but against saying. against left-handed pitchers, he's batting 267 this year. He has three homers. So how many how many bats? 30. Okay. So well, I mean, the platoon thing is there, but that was the whole reason he he would have continued to play against lefties in Anaheim too. Until they benched him. Yeah, but. The, he wanted to play against righties there as well. Just I, trust me on this. We, we both it's, agreed his best chance for playtime was probably the Angels. But as you kind of pointed out, there could have been some indifferences between management and Pujols. He doesn't like Joe Madden. I'll just say that. Oh, could be. Okay. Again, I mentioned it at the top. I don't want to spend too much time on this because I'm so tired of talking about these unwritten rules. Because I hate when one person, one old head, <laughs> makes a big story out of nothing, okay? You're mean Mercedes. They're up by 11 runs against the Twins, Chicago is. You're mean Mercedes. They have Williams Ostadio on the mound. He's thrown 45 miles per hour EFIS pitches. Mercedes un- unloads on a ball to center field, hits a home run. And the Minnesota Twins broadcaster, I'm not even going to mention his name. Minnesota Twins broadcaster said, I don't like it. Up 11 runs. I don't like it. Every, why are we doing this again? Did we not learn a damn thing from last year with Tatis hitting the granny of 3 Yeah, yeah. Can I say one thing? Yeah. I understand the old school way of thinking of like not padding your stats and not blah, blah, blah. But here's the thing. If you get out there, like they just want you to just take an easy swing and ground out and get it out. Like that's – it's still your stats. Like that's your money. This is a kid who grinded for years and years and years playing in Mexican independent league baseball, trying to get back to professional baseball, got to the big leagues as a 28 year old. He's not going to take anything for granted. You want to throw me a cookie down the middle. I'm going to take my knock and put another hit on the back of my baseball card. Yep. Sorry. You know what the announcer should be mad about? How f- shitty their baseball team's playing. Amen. You know what? Don't fault someone else for kicking your ass. Play better. Period. Here's what I hate. Now, now I will say this. Sorry to cut you off. No, you're good. I don't like, don't be out there still in bags like that. That is not needed. Don't be out there still in bags and all that. But if you're at the plate, get your knock. It's hard to hit. It's hard to get hits in the big leagues. Believe it or not, even though he's hitting, God knows what he's still hitting. He's through like 360. 360. 370 poor guy he's just not seeing it well you know it's take your knocks dude because i guarantee today or tomorrow he's gonna be facing somebody throwing 100 so here's a free knock take it now don't get a knock and go out there and steal bags and that that's a little far 
you can call that unwritten rule, whatever. It is an unwritten rule, but that's just too much. But if you're at the plate, take your knock. Swing. What I hate is that these players put in the work all off season to get to this point to have success. They have so much success that they're destroying a team so much that they throw out their pitcher. And then they get condemned for having so much success. That makes zero sense. Maybe your team should have worked a little bit better in the off season to where they wouldn't get blown out by 11 runs. I hate that. I mean, it's one game. Play. I I mean, um, we'll take that back. The twins have been pretty bad all year, but yeah, I, I didn't think they'd be this bad. I, I just, I, I'm tired. I had them, of, I had them being a wild card team. <laughs> me too. I'm tired of players having to walk on eggshells because they've had so much success. That shouldn't yeah. be the case. They should be. It's lovely. slowly changing, though. It, I, it's this is even when I was in the league, the, the game's way different now. Yeah. Again, like, we've probably spent too much time on this because ninety nine percent of baseball fans are like, "Shut the hell up, dude." We can talk about whatever we want for however long we want. I don't care. This is our pause. <laughs> <laughs> right. We don't have a timer on this. Okay, sp- staying in the unwritten rule. This isn't really an unwritten rule. This is another stupid bad take that people have been putting out there. The Manny Machado slide. I asked you about it immediately after because I wanted to get your take. I, I'm a fan. I didn't play in Major League Baseball. I wanted to hear your take. You've actually been out there on the diamond on that stage. Yeah. The Manny Machado slide, clean, right? The, 100% slide. clean. You can't – I guarantee you can't find me one player to say that was dirty. I haven't found one. You know, exactly. No one – there's been nothing on social media of any player saying that's dirty. That's what they teach. You're still – allowed to break up a double play you're in the baseline a lot of people saying oh you can't take guys out anymore yes you can you just can't deviate from your line you have to go towards the bag if they're on the bag you can plant them in the left field if you want keep your feet get keep your feet down don't go in spikes up on a guy but you can put your body into a guy if he's on the bag or in the base path you remember albert bell remember when he plowed that guy and no one said a word. There, the, the second baseman's kind of out of it. He's like, "Hey, that's f-ed up, bro. Like, what are you doing? I'm dead." <laughs> but <laughs> like, there was no penalty there. There was no fine, no nothing. And he straight on like free safety filled the gap and put the hat on that guy. Mm-hmm. All right, Manny Machado slid feet down. He immediately turned and was like, "Hey, dude, Tommy Edmund, are you okay?" All right, cool. And Tommy, no one from the Cardinals had anything to say about it. And Mike Shield is a guy who's going to speak out. He's done it before. Yep. He didn't have a word to say about it. That's a clean baseball play. That's how it's taught. Everything about that play happened textbook. Yep. Case closed. But I loved, what I loved about it is Padres assistant coach Skip Schumacher. He People were questioning, was it dirty, was it not? And um, people were asking, well, who teaches that? Skip Schumacher came out out of nowhere from the top ropes and was like, I teach that. And it was the Padres. This is it. it was on Cody, Cody Decker. Cody Decker tweeted it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. We got to get then, him on the show, by the way. I played with him. He's hilarious. We should. We need to get Cody on the show. Yeah. We gotta get Cody. Um, Jace Tingler said the same thing. Padres manager. He said, I was literally, when I was a player, I was taught that coming up through the Blue Jays organization. Like that's what they teach. Before. Okay. Listen, before this, the whole Utley thing and Ruben, whatever, Tejada, all that. Yeah. All the. Before all that is in order, if I didn't make contact or show that I was trying to crush a guy on a double play, my vets in a dugout were like, the f*** man, like, let's go. Like, they thought I wasn't playing hard because I didn't try to break up, break up the double play. Not because I'm trying to break a guy's leg. I'm never trying to do that. But it's more like an effort of break up the double play. Like, put your body on him, make him uncomfortable, get in his way, something. Yep. And now you you can't. I mean – the middle infielders are so comfortable at second base now. Like you just, they catch it and go right over the bag because if you don't slide right into the bag, it's interference. It's yep. crazy. If it's not Machado it's or if it's anybody but Machado, we're not talking about it. 1000%. That's a good point. That's a really good point. Yep. Yeah. If, if it's not him, just because of his history, it would have never come up. Last up on our rowdy roundup before we continue on with some hitters that are having a whole lot of success this year. Noah Syndergaard is going to be going on a rehab assignment for the New York Mets. Now, the New York Mets, really strange. They are 28th in runs per game. But if you look at total runs scored, they're actually in last. Now, they've played a little bit less games. But those bottom three teams, runs per game, it goes Mets, Tigers, Pirates. The Tigers and Pirates are both bottom of their divisions. I mean, two really poor teams. The Mets, at 28th in, in runs per game, they're technically in first place. 
in the NL East. Very strange. But pitching, man. May, maybe they're going to have pitching, exactly. And they're going to have more pitching returning. Syndergaard going on a rehab assignment. Carlos Carrasco coming back as well. And as you mentioned, your boy Seth Lugo, who I know you have a hard on for, is coming back as well. That's a little... I was going to say that's firm. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is. Um, Accurate. That's hard on is a little much. I do like him just because of his versatility. I'll give you that. Mm-hmm. He's, a, he's a great addition to the team. Um, yeah, I mean, they just pitch, dude. Like their offense, if their offense could just be middle of the pack, like average, they go deep into the playoffs because pitching is what wins playoff games. If – they are just in the top 20 in offensive categories. They're going to win the division mm-hmm. because their pitching is that good if their pitching's healthy. But even if their pitching is not that healthy, look at the depth. They don't need Thor. They don't need Carrasco. They don't need Lugo right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, DeGrom's throwing. He's supposed to throw soon just to see where he's at. Yep. I think it was yesterday. I don't know how that went, but. He'll be back soon. I don't think that's serious. I think he has some tightness. They're trying to avoid him tearing his oblique and missing months. Yep. So I think he'll be fine. Um, I just don't picture this offense sucking much longer. I just I can't see a full season of Lindor hitting 190, 185. I saw funny, he posted a picture yesterday uh, of his green hair. Did you see it? I missed and it, it said lettuce. And somebody commented, let us get our money back. <laughs> Damn. Lettuce. <laughs> I was like, Jesus. Mets, that's, Mets, uh, Mets, right. Mets fans. Are, who? I don't want to blast anyone. Who's like the most toxic fan base you've encountered on Twitter? Toxic? I on get twi- into it. I get into it with Angels fans all the time. On now, Twitter, there's some really great Angels fans, but for whatever just, reason, Angels fans have it out for me. That's because you're a Padres homer. They're in that's, completely different leagues. Like it doesn't. People love to yell at people, and there's no repercussions on on Twitter. So, I can say whatever you want. You can't get punched in the face. So, um, did you see Stevie Cohen tweet, like, during the game a couple nights ago, and he was like, guys, like, calm down. We can quit with the negativity. We can still win this game. And they ended up winning. They ended up coming back. As when Taiwan Walker pitched, it was like 0-0 going to the seventh. They ended up winning 3-1. to And the I would just – Made the mistake of like, I want to see what people are, people are responding well to this. It was so toxic. Yeah. Met, Mets They're fans like, can be tough. Not with this team you put together. Like, how can you be happy with this team? I'm like, bro, you're in first place. What the yeah. f- are you talking about? How can you be happy with this team? You're winning the division with one of the worst offenses in the league. What do you mean? If you had a halfway if you had an average offense, you would be considered one of the best teams in baseball right now. Mm-hmm. I said a lot of F-bombs today. I, was, I apologize. Hey, you okay? Everything okay at home? No, I'm great. I just uh, I crushed a rowdy energy right before this, and I'm just, whoo. I got a little buzz going right now. I'm feeling nice. good. Very nice. Fired up. I'm feeling rowdy. <laughs> feeling rowdy. Well, we're all done with our rowdy roundup. So let's take a break, and when we come back, we'll break down five, five to seven hitters. We might give you a couple add Seven? My God, man. We'll talk about a couple that are having a lot of success this year coming up next. Okay, we're back. So we're breaking down some hitters that maybe you haven't been paying too much attention to. I mean, we talked about Shohei Otani, Mike Trout. I mean, your staples in this league. But some guys that really aren't getting enough attention. J.D. Martinez is is one guy that's just been crazy. The entire Red Sox, really. J.D. Martinez, Xander Bogarts aren't quite getting the attention they deserve. You want to hear a crazy stat about Xander? I saw he is second in in war behind Mike Trout since 2019. Wow. And we just don't talk about it. Yeah. That means he's the best shortstop in war as well. Um, J.D. Martinez, yeah, dude. He's back on track. Back to old J.D. Martinez. Um, he just had a, he had a crappy year last year. Mm-hmm. I think all the COVID stuff, like, really affected some people that are really routine-oriented, and he couldn't. He couldn't do his normal routine just because of protocol and everything. So he's back on track, man. He's nasty. Yeah, Rafi Devers, too. 34 ribbies for Devers, 33 for JD, and then Xander is what, seventh in OPS. So the Red Sox have been raking. With now, with with solid defensive numbers, too, So mm-hmm. as a shortstop. So, yeah, he's he's a special player, man. 
It really now, is. I want to dive in on Ronald Acuna. Ronald Acuna is having an MVP caliber season for a Braves team that's been stifling. I bet they've had some injury problems with their rotation. But Ronald Acuna hitting everything coming his way, especially against sliders. And I know you have some Dude, fun There's some bits. wacko number on his sliders. Break, break, break him down for Acuna. Well, Why can is you read he me his stat line? Do you have his stat line? 290? How dare you doubt me with my stats? It's rhetorical, dude. I just do I have stats. Okay, Ronald Acuna this year. He is sixth in OPS with a 1013 OPS. He's got 12 dingers, which is first in the mm-hmm. National League, 24 ribbies, and he's batting 291. Is that good? All right. So the only thing, okay, to break Acuna down, tremendous low ball hitter, tremendous fastball hitter. Um, I will say he, I'm going to tell you how to get him out. Actually, I'm going to tell you how to get him out mixed with what he does. Well, low ball hitter. So I would, if you're going to throw fastballs, I would throw him above the zone Mm -hmm. because he is what we call when you're hitting, you want to be a yes, 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 no hitter, not a no, no, no. Yes. Does that make sense? So yes, yes, yes. No is like you have a bow and arrow. I've used this before pulled back. And you let it go. Like he's yes, yeah. He's swinging at everything until he's not. That's why he's chuck swing so much, and that's why velocity doesn't affect him. So you can throw 110, and he's gonna barrel it because he is always swinging. When he he if he ever takes without his hands moving towards the ball, he was auto taking because 90 percent of his takes, his hands are like he's chuck swinging or his body's already starting to swing. So that's why he handles velocity well. If you're reading that as a pitcher, you got to say, all right, like I should, I, I can't throw with anything in the zone here. Like he's ready for that, especially with two strikes. So he will chase good breaking balls down the dirt. He, um, above the zone fastballs, since he's so aggressive, high fastballs are really hard for hitters because they look really good to you. You see them out of the hand really well, and it's up closer to your eyes and your face, and you see it really well. So chest high heaters are really hard to lay off, especially with spin rate nowadays and four seamers, and pitchers combating the launch angle swing, which Acuna has very well uh, mastered at this point. But what you said about his slider, so he his whiff thirty his whiff percentage on the slider is thirty two percent. That's the highest percent on any of the pitches he whiffs on. Mm-hmm. Which is absurd, by the way. Tatis whiffs over 60% on both a curveball and a changeup. That's crazy. So 32% is not bad at all. Um, you see guys whiff that much on fastball sometimes. So he whiffs 32% on a slider, but he slugs almost 1,300 against a slider. Wow. So he's, So that tells me one thing. Don't throw a slider over the plate or it's going to land in the nacho stand in left center. Or right center. He goes the opposite field. Anywhere, bro. He sprays it. So, But that will tell me he will chase it down in the zone. Hard sliders with, with late bite because he's trying to gear up for that fastball he's that human. he hits so well. So um, all his stat cast numbers are through the roof, exit velo, barrel percentage, hard hit rate. Everything is up, mm-hmm. which just tells me he just he's getting better and better. He's 23 years old. Some of the best hand-eye coordination I've ever seen and him being able to check swing and stop his swing so much. That's the only way to combat this high velocity game we're in right now. You have to start your swing or you're going to get blown away. He's able to adjust on, on spin in the zone and that's why he does it so well, but it is also kind of his kryptonite to chasing pitches out of the zone. Interesting does that all make sense? No, it made sense. It, no, interesting note about his whiff percentage. The best percentile he's ever been in his career he was in the 33rd percentile in 2018. So his rookie year, he's at 33rd percentile with whiff percentage. Now it's not very good. That total? was bottom of the league, total 33rd. Per- so this year he's in the 81st percentile and with whiff percentage, he's not swinging and missing anymore. And his chase rate way down. I mean, out of zone percentage way down. So he's, he's swinging at good pitches and, I'm not seeing him swing out of his ass either. I feel like he maybe went from swinging 100% to swinging like 90, 95%. Like took just enough off his swing where he could control his barrel a little bit more and there's a little more contact mixed in there. How about Nicholas Castellanos? I know that he's one of my favorite players right now. Did you see the post game fan with the fan and Manfred's face? Manfred's face. Yeah. So basically, 
Castellanos before he went up and hit a home run, uh, some fan told him, "Hey, imagine Manfred's face is on the baseball." And Castellanos, yeah, he was sitting right behind home plate. <laughs> came back. Castellanos gave him a fist bump. They interviewed Castellanos after the game. Castellanos gave the fan the mic as a post game no. interview. Castellanos just kind of smiled and was like, "He's like, all right, yeah." He's like, "I'm, I'm probably gonna get fined, but what's new?" Yeah, I love that. But Castellanos this year, just fourth in OPS. He's got ten dingers, uh, twenty five ribbies. It, him and Jesse Winker both for the Reds have been just tearing the cover off the ball. That's a great park to hit in. Sure. Great American small park, baby. Sure. But it, nonetheless, there's been hitters that haven't had as much success in great American small park. So shout out to Nicholas. Max Muncy, another guy that I want, had circled on my list. And look, he's not having his you know best power numbers necessarily, but he's leading the league in walks. I was about to say his walk percentage is nuts. When you look at, you're talking about percentiles and stat casts. When you look at his chase percentage, unbelievable. The guy doesn't swing anything out of the zone. You can't teach. Which, that. as nasty as stuff is now, you'll, you've never seen him chase fastball up, which is crazy to me. The only thing you'll see him chase is like the, every once in a while that slider, nasty, like left on left slider. But hey, they have Albert Pujols for that now. He has the best chase. He has the best chase rate in baseball. The lowest chase rate in baseball. What is it? Sorry. No, you're good. Please don't doubt my stats again. That's twice you've done that in the show already. So his out of zone swing percentage. He only swings at eleven percent. So eleven percent of the pitches out of the zone. He's he's only swinging at eleven percent of them. Jeez. Walk That's percentage. Impressive. Walk percentage is one hundred percentile. Like. <laughs> the guy just swings the strikes. It's ridiculous. Yeah, shout out Max Muncy. Jesus Aguilar, one of my favorite players in baseball because of how much fun he has at the dish. Having another really solid season for Miami. Now, he was basically released by Milwaukee. Dude, he lost it. He was an all-star with Milwaukee mm -hmm. and then had a couple down years. I don't know what happened. Maybe fight an injury? I don't know. But he's batting 282 this year, nine dingers, and uh, how about a 916 OPS? Having a nice year for Miami. Vladdy G, I want you to break down Vladdy G. Vladdy Guerrero Jr. Because he's having a remarkable year. If it wasn't for Otani and Trout, he'd be right up there with the top of the game. Um, you know, tops in the game for MVP race. And Vladdy G's yeah. tons of success. This is uh so Vladdy's another guy. It's just uh average and power combo that is kind of rare. Most of the time it's one or the other. And he's both. I mean, he's hitting almost 320 with 11 homers. Uh, he also has a higher walk percentage than he has a strikeout percentage. His walk percentage is 16. His K percentage is 15 and a half. I think that, that's impressive. That walk percentage is twice as much as either of the pre previous two years. 2019, 2020, he had a walk percentage of 8.9, 8.2. This season, it's at 16.1. He's doubled his yeah. walk percentage. His out of zone swing percentage is down as well. It was 24 last year. It's 18 this year. And his rookie year, it was 28. So it's down 10% since it's just two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, another fastball hitter. Uh, the only thing I could find on him, like you weren't going to beat him velo with velocity. Uh, like I said, he's not really chasing much. 18% for a power hitter is not much, especially his bloodline. His father used to hit balls that bounce off the ground. So, uh, yeah, I think that's impressive. So the one way you're going to beat him is not throwing pitches out of the zone or breaking balls out of the zone. Change-ups in the zone. He has a 52% whiff rate on change-ups. Yeah, that tells me a lot. It tells me he's dead red heater. He's looking fastball, which you should in this league. Guys love their heater. They love to throw hard. They want to blow your doors off. This is not a guy who can do that. On off speed, he has a negative 11 launch angle. So that tells me it's weak contact. You can shift them. You can do whatever you want. Throw change-ups, hard sliders in the zone. He's looking fastball. He's going to catch it out front. He's going to catch it off the end of the bat. He's going to catch it off his front leg and hit ground balls. I mean, the, 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 the numbers support that. Um, and like I said, he's not going to chase. So don't waste your time trying to throw it out of the zone. Throw him, throw him. Speed change, be deceptive with, with your speed in the zone, and you can get him out. Ooh, That's yeah. kind of a trend. That's kind of a trend in baseball. There's a lot of hitters having success this year. I think you pointed this out on the last okay. podcast that have decreased their launch angle. Guys like Chris Bryant. Trout. Trout. They've decreased Buxton, their launch angle. Hosmer. And and they're enjoying like Buxton success. Buxton has decreased his like 14 degrees. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's ridiculous. That's massive, bro. Um, I I want to look at the White Sox, their offense. Uh, Houston, their offense. They all have big decreases in launch angle, and they're playing old school baseball. I call it La Russa ball that the White Sox are playing right now. Um, but they're at the top of a lot of offensive categories right now, except for slugging, except for home runs. Mm-hmm. And and their their hitting coach said, everyone, if you live and die by the home run, it's it, it's not going to be winning baseball. You can't. You have to produce runs. You have to manufacture runs in baseball to be a, a, a consistent baseball team. Home runs are streaky. Home runs come and go. But if you're able to hit behind runners, hit and run, hit with two strikes, yep. that's how you win baseball games, just getting people on base, giving yourself a chance. You can't just wait for the three-run homer every game. Yep. So I think I think that's playing into a, a, a lot of the success that the White Sox hitters are having. Yeah, they're second in OPS, if I'm not mistaken, and run differential. They have the best run differential in the league the White yep. Sox do. They are plus 70. Um, compared this to is, the next team is the Astros at plus 50 something like 53 56 right 56. yeah so yeah. the Astros by the way they're first in hits per game with about nine hits per game first in batting average at 266 second in slugging second in run differential like you said Altuve Bregman Brantley are all right around 300 or above but you leave Gurriel. Gurriel, yeah. Gurriel's okay yeah. you know what's crazy Gurriel's hitting 322 but his BABIP is 328 that tells me it's sustainable. He ain't getting lucky. He's not getting lucky. He's like getting like real hits. Uh, but he's got seven homers. Your daddy Alvarez is hitting 348 with seven and 22. Uh, but he has four walks and 34 strikeouts, 24% strikeout rate. But in 2019, when he won rookie of the year, he had a 25% strikeout rate of, through like 280 at bats. So maybe that's not a big deal, but his bad bip is 419. So he could cool off a little bit. But his exit below is super high, so that could play into a high BABIP as well. Um, yeah, Guriel though. Houston's got to turn it on. They got the they got the athletics right now. They're playing the A's right now. And then six, counting this series against the A's, six of their next seven series are against teams with winning records. So big month yeah. coming up for the Astros. On the flip side, the Blue Jays' schedule is going to open up. They're going to have some winnable games coming up. So – the division standings could be it could look a lot different two weeks. I mean, we're awesome. still early in the season. It's gonna look different three months down the road, but we could see some movement in the standings. Uh, you're gonna it's start been fun though, because there's there's been a lot that we didn't expect. Right. You know, and that's fun. And then there's teams that started terrible and that like look at the A's, they're 0 6 and now they're winning the division. Like, yep. I love baseball, man. This is fun, of course, as always. I mean, we'll be back with you guys later this week, but um, you know, I, I know people have been asking about they've been wanting us to break down some pitchers that have made some adjustments we're planning on it so i think we'll maybe test that out next time we uh, do around we'll do some brooksy's best bets we'll be back with you all week on the wake and rake podcast all right brooksy until next time brother hey buddy